Bonnie Woodward was a 47-year-old woman from Alton in Illinois. She was a two-time cancer survivor and she worked as a caretaker at the Eunice Smith Nursing Home. Bonnie had four children, but only three was living with her. Her 17-year-old daughter Heather was living with another family because she had an argument with Bonnie. The family she was living with is Roger Carroll, his wife Monica and their 16-year-old son Nathan Carroll. She knew them through church. Bonnie was last seen on the 25th of June 2010 at work. Her co-worker saw her talking to an unknown man. The next day, she did not show up for work. Her co-workers and her boyfriend got worried since it was so unlike her and she was reported missing. The first thing they looked into was the unknown man Bonnie was seen talking to. They noticed that he resembled Roger Carroll a lot the man Bonnie's daughter was living with. The police also found his fingerprints on her car. When questioned, Roger told police that he wasn't even in the area on the day she disappeared. Police had no physical evidence that he was involved and had to let him go. There was absolutely no other leads and the case grew cold. That was until March 2020. Nathan Carroll, now 25 years old, wanted to tell police what really happened to Bonnie. He told them that he kept his father's secret for 10 years, but recently his father Roger had begun abusing his mother Monica and he had enough. Nathan testified against his father. This is everything he had to say about what really happened. On the day that Bonnie was last seen, June 25, 2010, Roger and Nathan returned early from verification, leaving behind Monica and Heather at Nathan's grandmother's house. Roger drove past the Eunice Smith nursing home and saw Bonnie's car. He then said to Nathan, good, she's working today. Later in the afternoon, Nathan heard 8 or 9 gunshots in the backyard of her house and he went to check. He saw his father with a handgun and Bonnie laying on the ground, wearing scrub pants and white sneakers. Roger then ordered Nathan to start a fire. Roger picked up Bonnie with a front loader and dropped her in the fire pit. The two of them kept the fire going for days, till there was only charred bone fragments left. Roger also instructed Nathan to destroy her phone with a hammer and mow over the grass where the fire was. Nathan complied because Roger told him Bonnie was a very bad person and she abused Heather. One of the phrases Roger used was, she needs to go away and never come back. All this new information led to a search of Roger's property. The police found a spent 9mm shell casing, a matching projectile and matching bone fragments. Roger was found guilty. He will receive his sentencing on April 23, 2020. It could be between 20 to 60 years in prison. Because he used a weapon, he could even face life in prison. Adam Brandage was a 26-year-old father of two from Quakertown. He had recently inherited a lot of money when his father passed away. With the money, he bought a house. He lived there with his roommate, Damon Smoot. Adam met Damon only a few months before buying the house. In October 2004, Adam's ex-girlfriend and the mother of his children got worried when he stopped answering her calls and he was reported missing. One of the strange things was that Adam's roommate Damon was still living in Adam's house all alone and was driving Adam's 1997 Mercury Cougar, which was his most prized possession. Damon told Adam's mother that Adam gave everything to him. Each time the police or someone asked Damon what happened to Adam, he would tell a different story. He said Adam went to Iowa because he was behind with child support. Then he said that Adam went to Wisconsin to flee an arrest warrant. 
The story would change a couple more times after that. Only this year in 2020 did Damon decide he will tell police what happened. On January 9th he agreed to plead guilty and he told police everything. He told them how he was jealous of Adam and all the possessions he had. On October 4, 2004, Adam called Damon asking him for supplies, he needed to fix something in the house. Damon told Adam to meet him at his workplace. There, the two of them got into a massive argument. Damon retrieved a baseball bat from his car and hit Adam over the head with it. Adam fell to the ground and started having a seizure. Damon then placed his fingers over the nose and mouth of Adam until he stopped breathing. Damon showed police where he had buried Adam. It took more than a day to retrieve the remains. Police are sure that if Damon didn't tell them that they were never going to find Adam. Damon was already serving a 10 year sentence for an unrelated crime. He will be eligible for parole when he's 62 years old. Adam's mother Donna Brandich says she knew all along that it was Damon because he was driving Adam's car and living in his house like he owned it, basically living Adam's life. District Attorney Matthew Weintraub had this to say, Adam never had a funeral, never had a grave marker, just a tomb in the rock for 15 years, but I'm pleased to now say he's been returned to his family for a proper burial. James Essel was a loving father and husband living in Montgomery County, Virginia Beach. He owned the Sugar Loaf Mountain Market convenience store. In March 1992, James's body was found laying behind the counter. He was stabbed 29 times. It was clear that he had fought hard for his life since the suspect's blood was also found at the crime scene. This was the only lead police had, but DNA was not as advanced as it is nowadays and they couldn't do much with it. In 2017, police sent the DNA samples they had collected to Parabon Nanolabs. Parabon Nanolabs was able to make two images, one of how the suspect might have looked like in 1992 and what he might look like in 2017. This unfortunately did not help and police decided to focus on genetic genealogy to solve this case. They used databases to find family members of the suspect and narrowed it down. In January 2020, they narrowed it down to Hans Hewitt's. On February 10th, police collected a DNA sample of Hewitt's and it matched the blood they found perfectly. Two days later, they went to arrest him at his house. They found him in his car. He had a gun with him and he waved at the police. When he was told to drop it and he didn't, he was fatally shot. A neighbor of his caught it all on tape. Hans's wife believes her husband is innocent and is now working to clear a deceased husband's name. <laughs>